G'day fellas and welcome to 11 insane new Japanese mechanics that are coming in Age of Empires 4 expansion pack, The Sultan's Ascend. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new mechanics that are coming in chronological order, which means that we're going to start in the Dark Age, work our way through the Feudal Age, the Castle Age, and then finally the Imperial Age, which unfortunately means that we're going to be saving the best for last because there is an Imperial unique mechanic that is absolutely ludicrous. I can't wait to show it to you. So let's get into it. When you start off in the Dark Age, the first thing that you're going to be coming across that's unique to the Japanese is the farmhouse. The farmhouse is a unique building, and it is the way that it works is that they, they've taken two buildings and just put it into one. You've got a house, and you've got a mill. And that means that if you're gathering resources immediately next to this house, uh, and it is a food resource that you're gathering, you're just going to be dropping it off. Now, I've got some cheats on, and that's why I'm building things fast and gathering, thing, gathering things fast, so your villagers won't be going this fast unless you've got some cheats on. Uh, but they can be going faster if you do have the unique upgrade for the Japanese. That is, it is brand new. It is unique. Now, the Japanese don't have access to the standard farm upgrades that most civilizations have got access to. So your horticulture, uh, your fertilization, your precision crossbreeding, uh, they won't have access to that. But they do have access to this. And this is the three-tier technology that increases carrying capacity, movement speed, and berry bush gather rate. That's a big one. That's going to be impactful at the top level. But let's, that's enough about the farmhouse. Let's get into their second one, which is called this bad boy right here, Forge. Now, the Forge is a combination building. It is a mining camp and a blacksmith. And because of that, it, it's very nice for the early game. It means that you don't have to put that 150 wood into a blacksmith. It also means whenever you put down your mining camps, you've got access to a unique technology for the Japanese. That's correct. They have access to Tatara. Uh, and Tatara is a fourth level of melee damage upgrades. That means that you can have access to four tiers of those melee upgrades. And that's really nice because this one's available to you in the Dark Age. And there's a good reason why that is. And that's because we're going to be spending quite a bit of time here in the Dark Age. There are so many unique bonuses available to the Japanese in the Dark Age. So if you love rushing in the Dark Age, you're going to love this civilization. The second thing that we're going to talk about, it's a little bit of a walk. It's all the way over here in the water, but it's definitely going to help you out if you do end up getting onto water maps. Uh, maybe maybe you're a fan of those, maybe you're not. Um, me personally, I'm not, but I think if I start playing the Japanese, I probably will be. And that is that the Japanese have got cheaper fishing boats. Now, that might not seem like a big deal at first, but I want you to consider the following. Often, when you're starting off in Age of Empires 4 on a water and land map, you're tasked with a choice. Do I focus entirely on my economy or do I focus on my military? The Mongols, they will typically focus on their military. They'll say, I'm going to start off with spearmen and then maybe I'll switch into water. Most other civs, they just focus on water. The difference with the Japanese is that because of their cheap fishing boats, you can do both. If you want to be aggressive, you can do that. And at the same time, you can keep training units and on top of that, still make fishing boats. Because of that, this unique mechanic for the Japanese is, in my opinion, insane. And I think this is probably going to make them by far the best water civilization that there is. And there's a couple of other reasons why that is. I'll get into it now. The next one up and... I'm, I'm excited to talk about this unit. This unit is ludicrous. It's crazy. It's going to win a lot of hearts right here. It is the Samurai. This unit is more expensive than a Men at Arms, and it's better than a Sam at Arms. It's better than a Sam at Arms. It's better than a Men at Arms. It is an amazing unit. So, the first thing you'll notice about this Samurai is that it is very cool looking. Uh, one of the things that it's got going for it... Now, keep in mind, we're, we're in the Dark Age here, and you have access to this. So, think of it like a Men at Arms. When we look at the base stats of it, it's very similar to a Men at Arms, same movement speed. Uh, it's got a little bit more ranged armor on it, uh, and it has access... Uh, it's got some pretty decent damage here. Uh, now, it starts off at 8 damage, but one of the things that you can do is you can research Tatara, uh, which, once again, is a unique upgrade. Uh, I'm going to research it instantly. And keep in mind, this is a unique upgrade line, which means that you're paying a different price for these upgrades. As you can see, 100 gold, 75 stone, versus 50 wood, 125 gold. Uh, gold, so that it's it's a unique cost. But now because I've I've had access to that, it also means that I can now go up to nine damage on on my my weapon. And you'll notice something else about about this samurai above his head, and that is that he's got a small little white line. And what that indicates is his deflective armor status. Deflective armor is a charge system where you are allowed to block one melee or ranged attack, and it recharges while out of combat takes eight seconds to come back so i'll demonstrate it here i'm going to run in underneath the town center and you can see i take an arrow fire and instead of losing health like i just did then i don't lose that health anymore uh it, it utilizes that charge and because of that 
Now it's just going to go sit back out once I've got eight seconds. Or once I've gone eight seconds, now I've got it back up. And this is incredible, right? Because when you're having early game skirmishes, this is amazing for that. You're able to come in, take a couple of hits. Let's say you take three hits. You take three hits. One of them doesn't work. So they've only done 66% damage. Whereas your enemies received 100% damage. You back out, let it recharge, come back in, fight again, let go back out. You just constantly hit them, hit them, hit them. It's terrible. It's terrifying. I don't want to play against it. But I tell you what, I'm, I'm damn well going to exploit it. But that's not all. That's not all. You thought we were done. I tell you what, this is this is a fire sale at the moment. I'm selling you on the Japanese Dark Age. The next thing, now, I don't think you'll be getting this upgrade in the Dark Age. You definitely can if you want to. It is called the Daimyo Menor. Now, we're probably going to be doing a video on this just separately because this system is quite complex. But essentially what it does is it, it has a number of upgrades going for it. Number one is it enhances the gather rate of villagers nearby that are on farms. I'm going to click this button right here and you'll be able to see exactly where that is. So any villager that's working within this yellow circle, uh, it is going to enhance that by 25% at its base level. Now there's three levels to this, which means it can go from 25 up to 50 and then from 50 up to 75. Uh, and each time you do that, it's going to increase the amount of health the town center has got. As you can see, it's got a bonus 1000 health. But on top of that, you also gain access to a new type of unit, which is called the Benaman. The Benaman is a unique unit. And that, that is our, uh, I guess it's, it's our next point tied in with, with the Daimyo, because the Daimyo is the, the fourth thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, and we can kind of get back to it in a little bit. But the Benaman is probably where we should start. Just get, we'll resume. Keep in mind, we're still in the Dark Age, by the way. Seven minutes through. Don't worry about it. Uh, this is called the Katana Benaman. There's different types of Benaman. Uh, so you can get a ranged one. You can get a cavalry one. This little guy, uh, you're going to train him. And you can see his stats. They're pretty damn good. 100 uh, health for this guy. 155 for this guy. And one of the key things to note is that he buffs up everybody that's nearby that's also infantry uh, and also does melee damage. So now you can see that our samurai has got an extra one attack uh, from what he had before. So it was 8 plus 1. Now it's 8 plus 2. And when he leaves that AoE... He's going to make sure that uh, he's, he drops that off. And then as soon as he comes back in, it is just a matter of picking that back up. So now all of a sudden, my samurai has got an extra two damage in the Dark Age with or due to my Katana Benaman. Now, keep in mind, this is a 15% bonus uh, that you're going to be receiving uh, with this. So this does scale throughout the game. So it might start off as, as one attack. But by the end of the game, it could be three attack, four attack, depending on how much damage you're doing. That, that's probably a lot of damage. So you can see he took a charge or he took a, a shot right there, took a couple of hits. And now this guy's going to take... So you can you can cycle these hits out. Now you might be wondering, okay, Drongo, what happens when the banner man dies? Where does his banner go? And that's a great question. So we're going to demonstrate that. He's going to sacrifice his banner to the gods. We delete him. And there's his banner on the ground. 30 seconds, that bad boy is going to sit down there on the ground, providing an AoE buff to any units that are within that AoE. If they leave the AoE, they lose the buff. And if they re-enter it, they regain the buff. And it stays there for 30 seconds. So if your enemy is trying to be sneaky and snipe out your banner man, guess what? You've got a backup plan. So I love it. I think it's such a creative decision from the developers to do this. Uh, but let's go back into the Daimyo. And, and talk a little bit about this. And it's hard for me to call it a daimyo because coming from Age of Empires 3, the daimyo was like, a, it was a unit. Uh, he was like a, a, a boss unit. Uh, whereas now I refer to the, the town center as a daimyo, so it's a little bit different. Uh, so we've got the first level already of our daimyo. Now let's get the second level. You can see we've got a, a visual upgrade that happens here. On top of that, we also get a faster gather rate on our farms. We get a little bit more health. And now the final upgrade. It's a bit more expensive. 1,200 stone and keep in mind i'm still in the dark age <laughs> this one gives you a rocket emplacement <laughs> your town center becomes an absolute behemoth your town center goes up to thirteen thousand health or an additional six thousand health that you can put on a secondary tc which is definitely going to be one of the ways that you can play this and it gets a weapon that does 80 damage with nine tiles of range with a 110 bonus against infantry and cavalry. So that means it one shots absolutely everything except for, I think like a castle age royal knight. That's pretty much it. Does a lot of damage against ships as well. So don't come near this bad boy. We're still in the dark age. Keep that in mind. We're still here in the dark age. I just, I can't express that enough. Anyway, it's not an AOE. So I'll try and, I don't think I can fire it off here without the enemy coming in. Yeah, I can't, I can't focus the, the town center onto it, but it's a giant rocket that just kind of explodes and goes, goes crazy like that. 
Uh, so anyway, that's that's your Dark Age bonuses that are unique and absolutely insane for the Japanese that we've covered here in the first 10 minutes of the video. Let's get in to the Feudal Age bonuses that you're going to start to notice. Now, you'll be greeted with an option between one or two landmarks, the, Coca store, the Kura Storehouse or the Coca Township. So you're not going to be able to access this one if you go for the Kura Storehouse, which is probably going to be the most common landmark that people do choose. You'll need to go through the Coca store, the the Coca, the Co gosh, the Coca Township, uh, which is about to produce Shinobis for us. So, Shinobis are a unique unit uh, to the Japanese, and you can only make them if you get this landmark. So, if you go for the storehouse, you cannot get access to this unit. I just want to really state that because this unit is going to become the most hated unit that there is in the game. You you've seen the Reddit threads about Royal Knights. Get ready to see Reddit threads about Shinobi's non-stop forum threads, Reddit threads, every kind of thread there is. There's going to be Twitter threads, probably not even Twitter threads anymore because that's not what they're called. So when you get this, or when, you, when you age up with this landmark, not only do you spawn a Shinobi, uh, you get access to produce them. They cost 60 food, 60 gold. And these units are incredible. They have relatively high health. I mean, it's, it's kind of low to be honest, uh, but they have insane damage, 20 damage. That's massive. Uh, and they get a bonus amount of damage against melee units as well. Now, that's not what makes them cool. What makes them cool are their unique abilities. So the first ability that they've got is that they can blend in with enemy villagers. So what I can do is I can click spy and click my enemy villager like that. And now all of a sudden I've turned into an enemy villager. And if the enemy comes close with a scout or a town center or an outpost or... I guess in this case, assistant, uh, <laughs> then I, I will expose myself like that, or, or I, I will I will be exposed. Um, and as a result, I will then be able to be shot. But I, I've seen the AI using these quite a bit against me and I see them running around and I know what they are, but they just look like villagers. And it's quite funny because if you look at the movement speed, they're very fast, 1.38. And it's, it's just, it's literally a villager just sprinting. And you're like, excuse me, villager, you very clearly are not a villager. Like, look how slow this guy is. And then you see this guy just sprinting along and he's like, I'm a villager, guys. Don't worry. Uh, it's We know who you are, Usain Bolt. Don't even try. So that's the first ability. Uh, I, I would recommend staying away from enemy structures, I guess. That's probably the best thing to do. Second one is sabotage. This is going to be particularly strong against English and against the French because what you're going to be able to do is you are going to be able to um, immediately at the start of the game, you get your Coca Township uh, and you're going to pop that shinobi out. It, it comes out for free at the beginning. So you can rush it. It comes out. What you're going to do is you're going to go shunshin. And you're going to go boop, like that. And you're going to run over towards the enemy base. Uh, so yeah, that, that's... Oh, I, to I totally didn't even mention. You can teleport. Yeah, that's, a, that's a thing. That's a thing. And you're going to run over to their base. And you're going to hit the button right there. You're going to throw the torch on their building. And now all of a sudden, their building's on fire. And they can't use their building. And this building is literally out of combat. Well, out of uh, out of whatever, out of production, out of service, out of it's it's not having a good time. Let's put it that way. It's disabled because it's been sabotaged for thirty seconds. And when you think about that, right? That's buying you a lot of time. That's buying you time to maybe get a second shinobi up here. And boop, come on, do it. Boop, boop. There you go. You got to make that sound effect when you do it. If you don't do it, you're not a real Japanese mate. I am a Japanese mate, therefore I make the sound effect. That you got to do it as well. All right. So then you run in with your second shinobi, and then what's? This? I was gonna do the same sound effect for this one. Yo, hey, oi, none of that. All right. Well, today we've learned 15 villagers inside a town center will kill a shinobi. Anyway, you guys get the picture. The shinobi, it's going to. It's going to hurt a lot of people. Uh, the other thing to note is that you can actually um, shun shin to a unit. Now, I'm, I'm going to have to double check the, the name on that because uh, I, to me, uh, that's not what it's called. It's called teleport. Uh, and you can you can blink right on top of enemy units, enemy villagers, uh, and you, you can do that with multiple uh, shinobis. So watch out. Next up, uh, we are going to be talking about a great song. Uh, it is a song where you get to choose your religion. That's correct. As the Japanese, you get to choose which religion you're going to become a part of. Are you going to be a Buddhist monk or are you going to be a Shinto priest? Those are your options. You've got two landmarks and only one you can choose. Now, most of the standard guys are probably going to go with Floating Gate. And I, in my opinion, this landmark is better. Let's go through them just quickly and talk about the pros and cons. And then we'll move on. So number one, Temple of Equality. Uh, so you get access to the Buddhist Monk, which are cheaper. So you can spam them, which you want to. Uh, and they can weaken enemy damage by 50%. They also provide 20% damage to nearby friendly units while casting Conversion. 
So if you're holding a relic, and if you go wallalo, it's going to increase the damage of the units that are nearby to that by 20%. 20% might not seem like a lot, but just remember you can hold five relics and these guys are cheap. So you could potentially increase your damage by 100%. On top of that, they also have an ability that allows them to weaken enemy units. Now it's single target, but it doesn't have a cooldown. So it, and it lasts for 30 seconds. So you can just like spam this bad boy on the enemy. I don't know how you do it at a mass level, like with lots and lots of units. But anyway, it's that that's, that's a thing. Uh, the main reason why I think people are just going to be going for the floating gate is because it's one of those landmarks that you just don't have to think about and you just get it and it's insanely good. It is one of the best landmarks in the game in its current state. So it unlocks the Shinto priest, uh, which is different from the Buddhist monk, and pla uh, and places, sorry, and unlock the Shinto priest and place Yoroshiro in buildings for special enhancements. It's not worded the best. Uh, it gives you access to Yoroshiro, which are... The best way to think of them is like relics, and they actually show up on the minimap as relics. If you look right here, you can see they're, they're like relics. So just in the same way that you can carry a, a relic with your priest, uh, you can carry a Yoroshiro with your Shinto priest. You can't do that with a normal priest. And this is what the Yoroshiro looks like. The Yoroshiro has the ability to boost uh, buildings, and depending on which building you want to bo boost depends on the bonus that that building provides. So, as an example, I'm going to take this Yoroshiro. Now, keep in mind, Yoroshiro respawn every four minutes. So, you need to be very careful about deciding where you're going to be spending the first Yoroshiro that you get, because you get two of them to start off with. So, uh, we've seen some players at the professional level look to put their Yoroshiro into a barracks straight away. And you might be wondering, what the hell does that do? Well, let me show you what that does. I've got a samurai here. Uh, and let me turn this off, this cheat off, so you can see how long it takes to train. Uh, and it takes... Uh, we've got... Uh, the, yeah, let's do the spearman instead. 15 seconds on the spearman. Uh, and when we put the Yoroshiro inside, that goes from 15 seconds down to 5 seconds. That's correct. A 200% production speed increase. That's a pretty significant amount. But what's important to note, that when the building dies, the Yoroshiro dies with it. The relic will pop out of a mosque. The Yoroshiro doesn't. It dies along with the building once it's killed. So there is a, a large counterplay here. Now, I'm sure many of you will be wondering, what other op where, where else can I place my Yoroshiro? Well, how about I give you a list of where you can place it. You can place it in your town center for 25% extra production speed. You can put it in your farmhouse. Remember this guy down here? The farm slash, or the house slash the mill, uh, the mill house. They, there's a, there's a particular reason why they didn't call it a mill house, even though it is a mill and a house and not a farm and a house. Uh, but I don't want to get into that because look, yeah, it's, it's related to mill house, but no one likes mill house. Anyway. 75 food per minute, which, okay, not bad. A lumber camp, so if you put it in a lumber camp, one of these bad boys, let me just, just remind you what they look like, then that's another 75 wood per minute. Uh, or a forge, which is the unique mining camp slash blacksmith, that's 75 gold per minute. Or you can put it in military uh, production buildings or docks, that's a 200% work rate, so you could throw it down in this dock if you really wanted to, and go ham with fishing boats. That's a, that's one way that you could do it. Actually, that's a pretty smart way. I'd be doing that if... Uh, if I wanted to make fishing boats, but you're in the castaway, why would you want to make fishing boats? Good question, Drogo. Anyway, uh, and then you can put it in the wonder for 4,000 health. And I have confirmed this does indeed stack with court architects, which is the Imperial Age upgrade for building HP. Uh, and it basically means if you've got a Japanese player on your team, they need to be the one that's building the wonder in the 4v4 games behind the stone walls because the wonder has more health for the Japanese player. So that's essentially it. Now, when it comes to my recommendation, I would recommend that you always, almost always, want to put your Yoroshiro in a forge. Having an extra 75 gold per minute is amazing. I'm not going to get into to it I, I, too much into detail, uh, but es essentially it is absolutely ludicrous to have. What do we got going on over here? Get out of here. And uh, yeah, it, it is ludicrous to have. And I, I suspect it's going to get to the point where you're going to see players that are stone, like th they will stonewall off a little segment like this. And then on the inside of it, they're just going to have a whole bunch of forges. Like they're just going to put their forges in like that so that they can't get sniped because it's going to become a genuine strategy where people look to try and snipe away the buildings that have got the Yoroshiro in them because that's how you reduce the power of the Japanese at, at that point. You know, you could take out a villager or you can kill a Yoroshiro. Anyway, that's going to be choosing my religion. Let's talk about our next insane brand new Japanese mechanic and it is available at the archery range not at the stable which can be quite confusing for people like me who figure well if you ride on a horse you probably come from a stable that is not the case here this is the Onamusha the Onamusha is the brand new mounted 
crossbowman for the Japanese. That is correct. It is a mounted crossbow. It runs very fast. 1.62 movement speed. These guys do not muck around. And a pretty decent range as well. 5.5 tiles of range. They've got a great attack animation as well. And of course, they do bonus damage to heavy units. Which means that uh, any knights that are trying to chase them down, any men at arms that dare enter the battlefield when these guys are around, they don't stand a chance. And you, you get a whole bunch of these bad boys out, they go really, really well. They, they, I would recommend running them with a front line, but this is the first time we've ever seen a mounted crossbowman. And I'm incredibly excited to see it because I'm a big fan of the crossbow. You guys know I love the Ablatrier, a unique French crossbow. Uh, and the Onomusha is definitely a great asset to the Japanese. And I'm incredibly excited to get to see it used. It's also got a, a cool, unique upgrade which is, do I dare, the Kaburaya Whistling Arrow. So they fire a whistling arrow when an enemy is seen, increasing movement speed for 10 seconds. I don't know exactly how that works, just simply because, you know, at, at the moment, technically, like, you see the enemy over here, but I, I guess they just fire the arrow. Like, is, they, is, is that it? Are they move? Yeah, look, 1.79 movement speed. Look at that. Boom. And then you then you just get your micro out. And you just you just do a little bit of micro. Oh, man, I tell you what, their animation, it's so smooth. You just boop, boop. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine playing this on Korean servers against Koreans with three ping? Oh, it would be terrible. Those guys would destroy you. All right. Let's talk about our next big thing. So this is going to be in the Imperial Age. Now, this is something that I still need to work exactly how far away it goes. And it's it's complex, okay? Uh, so le let's just dive straight into it. It is a landmark called Castle of the Crow. Now, we'll be talking about this landmark a little bit later, uh, but this one's called Castle of the Crow. So it acts as a castle, and it can periodically spawn treasure caravans. So not trade caravans, treasure caravans from selected neutral trading posts. Treasure caravans provide a large amount of resources upon reaching the Castle of the Crow. So naturally, you might think, okay, well, it's going to give less resources the closer it is and more resources the further away it is. And you'd be right. If you put the Castle of the Crow immediately next to the trade post, it's not going to be a good... Uh, it's, it's not going to be a good trade for you. It, it gives about 10% off the max. However, if you put it all the way away over in this corner and, and trade with this, it's still going to give you the same amount of resources as you would if you were to put it around... I'm going to guess somewhere around here. I think it should be fine. I, don't, I haven't done the exact numbers on it yet. I don't know how many tiles away it needs to be. Uh, but it, it can be pretty close. And you can see, like, on, on the minimap, we're, we're relatively close, maybe a third of the way through the minimap. Uh, and so let's do it. Let's let's take a look at our resources. Let, let's make sure that we've got plenty of space in here. In fact, we don't even need to. We can actually inspect it. So I'm going to click down here. So this is a keep. You can get all your, all your keep-like upgrades. Uh, let's get a university as well, just because we want to upgrade our court architects. Lovely. Uh, and now we can hit this button, treasure caravans. Now, the moment that you do this, okay, it just did it for me. I didn't have to do it wonderful it's going to spawn this little guy and this guy is your treasure caravan now if this guy dies you die not really uh if this guy dies you lose all the resources that are on him and you might be wondering drunga how many resources are on him surely he's not that important it looks like he's kind of carrying poop i'm not gonna lie to you guys is he carrying poop hold on let me get an angle can we get some lighting on that that's that's poop <laughs> that's it he's actually carrying poop uh have a look how many resources this guy's carrying before he gets there 189 stone 567 gold 567 wood, 567 food. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that right there. 2,000 resources. It can, it, it, so I think it works. I think the max is like 620, 630 of the big resources and then like a little bit of stone. It works out to be about 2,000 resources that this thing gives you on cooldown, by the way. Have a look at this. Ev so I think it's every five minutes. I'm not 100% sure, but it, it's at 240 seconds at the moment. So I would assume that it is. So you can you can choose which uh, which one you want, but I guess it just goes from the nearest one uh, if you forget to do that, which is nice. Uh, but that is going to be your ninth insane Japanese mechanic. I don't know how I feel about it because it's a lot of resources when you think about it, right? Like, let's say it's over five minutes. That's 400 resources every minute that you're just generating from this landmark out of thin air, which is nice. But at the same time, it can be a bit scary, right? Like, it's a bit, it's a bit of a gamble. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're just going to quickly restart the game just because I need to go in and access our second tree uh, or our second tree, our second landmark in the Imperial Age because that is the landmark that we're going to be talking about. I, I told you earlier about an absolutely insane game-changing, uh, you know, Jiffy and then we want Smorgasbord, Smorgasbord uh, and essentially this landmark is going to change the way that, uh, that late game is played. 
I will say that much. So, first and foremost, so there's two things for us to talk about. Uh, so it's, it's called the, Tag the Tanegashima Gunsmith, this landmark here. Uh, but we're not going to talk about it just yet. We're going to place it down, but we're going to talk about a unit that it makes first. So the unit that it makes is this bad boy right here. And this is called the Ozutsu. Ozutsu. Ozutsu? Ozutsu. This unit... Just have a look at him. Hold on. Give me a second here. I've got a joke to make. All right, guys. This is you. This is the guy she tells you not to worry about. Look at the size of that thing. And he's bald on top of that. You're not going to mess with a guy that... Well, I hear you guys. Get, out, get away from that food. This guy. Boom! Look at the size of that thing. Hey, you. Come back here. Boom! <laughs> That's so good, dude. Look at this stupid thing. What is this damn unit, dude? It's so funny. Look how he crouches down there. It's like a hand cannon, dude. Anyway, 6.5 tiles of range. 35 damage with an additional 130 against buildings, by the way. It's got a pretty slow attack speed, 4.75. But the, the highlight of this bad boy, in my opinion, it is... How do we say this politely? AoE damage. It does area of effect damage. Which means that when you're having a nice big fight and you mix a couple of these bad boys in, your enemy needs to split. And if they don't, you're gonna, you're gonna hit them like a banana. Alright, let's have a look here. I'm just going to do one attack to start. Boom. 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 Boom, boom, boom. Oh, dude. <laughs> this, oh, my gosh. This unit's so funny. It is, it's such a funny unit. It's a pretty expensive unit as well, if I remember correctly. Let's have a look and see. 85 food, 155. That's not that bad. It's quite gold heavy. Um, now, th that, that's the unit. Uh, let's talk about the last thing, the 11th thing on the list that I think is going to change the way that late game is played. And that is this landmark called the, Ta the Tanegashima Gunsmith. So, the Tanegashima Gunsmith stockpiles weapon supplies every 30 seconds that can be instant, that can be used to instantly produce gunpowder units. It comes with five stockpiles. It produces Ozutso uh, and allows access to the Rebaldequin. So the units that you've got access to are the Bombard, which you can just build as, as standard. Uh, you've got the Rebaldequin, which you can just build as standard. Now, you, I, if I remember correctly, you can't build that as standard uh, as the Japanese. We can just quickly double check the, t the tech tree, so I'm not feeding you guys fibs. Indeed, you cannot build the Rebaldequin uh, as a default uh, thing. You can build the Ozutsu, uh, and the you can train the Hand Cannoneer. Uh, but where it becomes powerful, very powerful in my opinion, is the stockpile system. Now, it do there's a little bit of a bug at the moment. It doesn't show you the stockpile. Uh, devs have said that they're aware of it and they're, they're going to fix it up. But what it means is that you can instantly spawn siege and you can react right now to a threat. Your enemy's pushing you. They're coming in hard. They're coming in fast. They're bringing in a whole bunch of units and you're sitting at 190 population. So what do you do? Well, it's up to you what you want to do. Uh, is there a lot of men at arms? Great, a whole bunch of men at arms. Now, keep in mind, I, I do not have the cheats on at the moment. You can see here, it takes 45 seconds. A whole bunch of men at arms coming in. Boom. I got a Rebaldequin. Just there, instant. Literally instant. Instant. I have a Rebaldequin. Oh, look at that. An en uh, The enemy is putting a, a keep up in, in the middle of my base. What am I going to do? Instant bombard. Boom. Instant bombard. There you go. Just like that. Now, now I don't have to worry about the keep because the keep is dead because I have an instant bombard. It is ludicrous. It is going to be so difficult to attack these guys in the Imperial Age. It is... I, I can't emphasize how important it is to have something that can train instantly uh, just simply because it allows you to react so quickly. At the lower levels, look, don't get me wrong, bronze, silver, gold. This isn't going to take you to Conqueror. But at the Conqueror 3 plus level, this is going to be incredibly difficult and frustrating to attack into just simply because of how quick you can react to your opponent i have no idea what that sound was by the way that that was an interesting uh, was it us getting a yoroshiro i think it was us getting a yoroshiro do, do i put the yoroshiro in the town center all right let's do it let's do it all right come here come here yeah there we go now the real question is can i put a yoroshiro in a taganashima oh i can't you can't put it in the taganashima gunsmith could you imagine and then you double like you're producing these really really fast uh, it doesn't work you can't do it uh, i can't do it in the coca township either all right, never mind. Anyway, that's going to be it. That's us rounding up out this video. 11 insane new Japanese mechanics. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Which one's your favorite? If I had to pick which one my favorite would be, it's probably going to be the Yoroshiro or the Daimyo system, just simply because you can get an absolutely ludicrous amount of farms under this town center. 
Uh, oh, we kill We, Yo, we fire it. We fire it. We taking him out. Anyway, that's going to be it. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.